It is the end of the reign for a man named Hussein. The melodrama over Mr. Obama, as the president leaves office in under a week, has reached a fever pitch, and the left can't hold itself together. In his farewell address to the nation, the president cautioned us about living in a bubble. Increasingly, we become so secure in our bubbles that we start accepting only information, whether it's true or not, that fits our opinions, instead of basing our opinions on the evidence that is out there. Sure, he says that now when his term's over. And he's been thinking about this bubble a lot. In fact, before the farewell speech, he admitted to living in the bubble. The bubble's the bubble. And, and I think we've done a pretty good job staying in touch with the American people, but at a certain point, you can't help but uh, lose some feel for what's on the ground because you're not on the ground. Uh, and, and you didn't think Donald Trump could win. Case in point. That's right. He didn't see a Trump win coming. And that's not all. Remember when he said ISIS was a surprise? The ability of ISIL to initiate major land offensives, that was not on my intelligence radar. Uh, great. <laughs> Given that this will be our very last show with President Obama as president, we thought... <laughs> Terrible! Terrible! <laughs> the most applause ever in this studio. <laughs> Anyway, we thought we'd pay a tribute uh, to him with what we believe are President Obama's greatest moments. As you know, there is a growing disrespect for government. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> I got a little confused. All right. <laughs> Kat, what do you make of this whole bubble talk, and what do you think President Obama's going to do next? Well, I, I didn't really watch the farewell address because I was reading all the PP tweets that were going on. That night. <laughs> BuzzFeed totally accidentally took the attention away from him. That's true. It totally it, did. It, yeah, it, it completely. Again, Trump overshadowed. Yeah, the bubble talk. It's easy, again, it's something that's easy to say. Of course, he's still in a bubble. What's he gonna do? I can see him giving a lot of speeches. Yeah. He's good at that. He's very good at giving speeches. Mm -hmm. He's very good at being a dude that everyone loves. But he's not okay with not being loved, which is why he didn't really follow up on a lot of things he said he was gonna do. Mm, interesting. Tyrus, what do you make of his exit? Where do you see well, him going? First of all, boo. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if for nothing else, Obama showed that the White House is for everybody. Mm -hmm. So for Good that, point. give me, give me that. <laughs> in his, his speech, I think, and the one thing that he's he's good at is, and a lot of people, I don't blame the Republicans for the issues in his presidency. His own party hated him. And he's. <laughs> they did. That. They, uh, they're back. They were, hey, you said it could be done. Could be done. But his own party undermined him constantly, and I think they were jealous, and they didn't have. And the fact that he was stuck working with Hillary, why would you let? The one thing Donald Trump does very well: all the guys he fought with don't work for him. Yeah, yeah. And Obama had to be make deals with people who despised him, and that's yeah. why the Democratic Party is the way it is. That's why it lost House seats. It's very dysfunctional, and he's going out on his red carpet and he's doing his thing. He's saying goodbye, and hopefully, I hope he goes off into the sunset and enjoys, and just gets away from it. You know, yeah. I really just go away. Just, uh, bro, go away, please. I love you. I love you. But, okay. Go away. Do you have any suggestions of where, uh, what uh, President Obama should do next? Suggestions? Yeah, Carrie. Sure. <laughs> I think he and I should do a talk show together. There you go. I, you would never be... get a word in. <laughs> 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 he, I mean, I, I think you're right. He's a fantastic speaker. Mm. He should be doing a lot mm. more of that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not for, I'm not for soaring rhetoric, Anthony. That seems to be what it is. He's a professional politician. We had become so sick and tired of it that we elected Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. Tired of it. That we, we were. Uh, also, I don't think the White House is for everybody. It, Al Sharpton was invited into the White House numerous times. If there was one person that shouldn't be in there, they should have dropped him off at the IRS building down <laughs> That's another thing. So Al Sharpton is the worst dude ever being in the White House. 
When I, I said for everybody, I meant everybody of color, like, creed, had Obama opened the door for everybody. So I understand what you meant. Yeah, and, take and, that over there. Don't and if he's going to Chicago to live, he's going to need a Kevlar bubble <laughs> because that, that city's out of control. You know, I and think... he's done nothing about it, or his buddy Rom didn't do anything about it either. Yeah. Yeah. yeah CD-ROM, as I like to call him. CD-ROM. <laughs> hey, you know, um, I think President Obama, he's young enough to play himself in all the movies that will be made about him. There's no need to get an actor to play him because he's still youthful. Or he could turn it around and he could play Will Smith in the Will Smith story. Oh, wow. Ooh. Huh? Did you that? imagine him reading a script, though, verbatim about his history as president and going, this guy's a <laughs> Like he can't see it unless he steps away and looks. Yes, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> On that note, still to come, Tyrus roams the halls and bumps into a major Fox News host who's now in traction. But first, are robots electronic people deserving a full set of rights? I vote yes, just so they don't strangle me when I sleep.